I'm in a, uh, in a relationship, a um, long-term relationship. And uh, we're getting to that stage now, you know, where she starts dropping hints. We're not married yet. Posh girls are the worst for the dropping the hints. Five years in, girlfriend turns to me. She's like, I can't keep introducing you as my boyfriend. That sounds so childish. I could call you my partner, but that's quite formal. <laughs> Lover, soulmate. I was like, landlord is fine. What, and I'm your tenant? I was like, no, tenants pay rent. <laughs> You're a squatter. And, um... <laughs> Sorry. That actual girlfriend was evicted. And the current... <laughs> My current girlfriend is great. She doesn't put lots of pressure on me. Uh, we have big conversations that we have to have, you know, the kid conversation that keeps coming up. I'm not sure whether I'm necessarily ready to have a child at the moment. Um, someone sniggering at the mere idea of me reproducing. Thank you very much for laughing at that. But you're right, it's ridiculous. I can't even look after a phone. <laughs> and you drop a phone, you can get a new one. It doesn't work like that with kids. <laughs> Same goes with upgrades. You get a slow one, you're stuck with it. <laughs> that, that, that was amazing. As I told that joke, I looked over there and saw a dad point at his son. <laughs> oh, that's made my night. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what just happened there is I remember what the next joke is. And if you didn't like that one, you're going to hate this one. <laughs> you can't do it. Obviously, obviously. But if they don't like it, it's your fault. Peer pressure, okay? <laughs> okay, now I got it, I got it, I got it. Okay, I'm lying in bed. Okay, we're talking about having kids, and I'm lying in bed with my girlfriend. These are just jokes. It's all fun. Okay. <laughs> I'm sweating. <laughs> right, okay. No, I'm lying in bed with my girlfriend, and she turns to me. <laughs> okay. Sorry, she didn't do that. <laughs> lying in bed. Like, what? Is there someone in here? What's happening? <laughs> Lying in bed, talking about kids, she turns to me and she throws this curveball at me. She goes, Jack, would you ever consider adoption? I went, um, well, only if you got pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> all my friends now, they're all getting uh, kids, all of them, are, loads of them are getting married. Loads of my mates are getting married now. I lost four friends last year. <laughs> That makes me sound heartless, like I'm never going to see them again. <laughs> Statistically, two of them will come crawling back. I, um, <laughs> realistically, four. I, <laughs> I don't object to other people's happiness. I don't. What I object to is their delusion of my level of interest in it sometimes. <laughs> wedding lists. Oh, the wedding register. That is the worst. These pe I, I, the first time I got a wedding list through, I thought it was a wind-up. That these are grown adults. Here is a list of the gifts that we want. I had to run to the mirror to see whether I'd grown a big white beard and a f***ing sleigh. <laughs> I always get to it late as well when there's only two things left and all you can get them is a butter knife or a yacht. Because <laughs> here lies the problem. These people are taking the piss. It's bad enough when it's something mundane that they want, like uh, plates. They wanted plates the other day. You didn't have those before? Yes, we're getting married, and we just thought it was time for us to stop eating our food directly off the table. <laughs> oh, and they go, high-end, that's even worse. My friend from university, my best mate from uni, on his wedding list is asking for a Royal Albert tea set. I'm like, mate, I've seen you eat Cheerios out of a slipper. <laughs> 40 quid as well for the Royal Albert tea set. F away. <laughs> In the end, I gave him a kettle and some mugs that I got for free. <laughs> Thank you, Travel Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that I like about weddings, right, and you must have seen this as well, it's so good. The best thing about going to a wedding is bumping into a bloke that you met on the stag weekend that is now with his missus. 
complete transformation. Gone is the swaggering and posture. Now his whole body is crumpled like a paper cup. <laughs> The Borat mankini has been folded away for a rainy day. Now a neatly steamed suit. Best still is when the voice has changed. When all of a sudden, because they're with their missus, they've started talking like they're in Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> you walk over. Aye, aye, Stevie, boy, the lager monster. Greetings and salutations, Jack. <laughs> May I introduce you to my radiant fiancée, Claire? Ah, oh, the fun vacuum. What? No, uh, no, no, no. no. <laughs> Yeah, remember you made that joke about how she's the only vacuum that doesn't suck? I did <laughs> oh, The vicar's sermon was wonderful. It nearly moved me to tears. Yeah, funny that, Steve, because the last time I saw you crying, you were being led down some stairs in Estonia by a prostitute with an Adam's apple. <laughs> so I can't handle them. I can't handle the stags, because every stag I've ever been on, there's always one member of the group that reveals a true darkness in their soul. And it's always the one you least suspect as well, isn't it? <laughs> it's always the quiet one, the groom's friend from home. <laughs> this is my mate, Colin. Hello! <laughs> oh, the journey I had down here, the Hagger Lane gyratory was chock-a-block. Thankfully, I had my good friend, Classic FM, to keep me company. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, got Colin down and wearing a fleece, just ordered a Sprite. Bit of a square, but probably a decent enough guy. Cut to five hours later, Colin is being escorted out of a TGI Fridays for <laughs> in a woman's handbag. <laughs> the stag do kitty. That's never worked in the history of mankind, has it? The stag do kitty. Yeah, chaps, we're all going to pay until the stag do kitty, and then this kitty will last all of us for the entire weekend. <laughs> Gone within 20 minutes. <laughs> You're like, what happened? There was a grand in there. Oh, yeah, sorry. Colin bought a gun. He's f***ing weird. <laughs> then you've got the journey back from the stag. That's the most depressing flight in existence, isn't it? You're all there on the plane, shivering wrecks, like broken men returning from war. The deafening silence throughout the fuselage of a thousand stories that can never be told. You're sober for the first time in 72 hours and now only too aware that you're sat in public wearing a t-shirt that says Lord Bumalot. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's bad for you. You turn to the back of the plane and there he is, Colin, strapped into his seat like Hannibal Lecter. He's got a black eye, a criminal conviction and hepatitis B. The fear slowly creeping across his face that come Monday morning it's back to work teaching in his primary school. <laughs> There's women laughing along. I can see their faces as I'm doing this routine. They're laughing along, but they're looking down their noses at us chaps. They are tutting away, going, oh, you boys, why do you do it? You know why you don't have a leg to stand on, ladies? Because whereas on a stag weekend, one of us turns out to be Colin, on a hen weekend, you're all Colin. <laughs>